hey Eddie, um, I think we need to go to our uh, demo for the evening. All right, who you have? Isn't that Walt? We've got Walt Wager up for the demo tonight. Walt, are you ready? I'm ready. Anytime you are. All right. All right. Well, let's bring you. All right. Up so, here. what what I'm going to do today, or what what I'm going to attempt to do, is to make a threaded insert for this the, this vessel with this top, and. Um, we talk a little bit about threaded inserts and then the machinery and then Captain Eddie's uh, video on how to do um, hand chasing. Nice. So to start with, you get a couple of examples here. The reason we're interested in threaded inserts, what a threaded insert is, let me start with that is that if you try to thread some of this wood, like this spalted maple, uh, you're likely not to be real successful because it's soft and it's variable uh, uh, density and all that kind of stuff. On top of that, the, the further something out is from the lathe, uh, the more variable it is and, and the harder it is to thread. And on top of that, if you messed up, you messed up. But if you do a threaded insert, which is this piece here, this is African blackwood for the um, uh, the tenon and uh, uh, African blackwood for the mortise, and you thread those, then you can you can glue them in, and you have a top that will screw on. All right, come on now, behave, and you have a container that's secure. So the threaded insert is an easy way to be able to thread larger objects. And it also, uh, if you mess up, you've only messed up a little piece of wood. You haven't messed up the whole project and um, you can do it that way. The other thing, put this aside, is another, another vessel. The threaded insert in this one actually is a part of the design of the piece. So you have here a collar and that's a threaded insert, then a piece of cocobola, which is the ring. And then the top is, is also threaded. It's just an insert that's not cut off. And uh, it becomes part of the design of the piece. That screws on there too like that. Questions so far? By the way, anybody has any questions or any comments anywhere along this thing, please just speak up. Okay, sounds good, Walt. <clears throat> so the first thing we have to understand is that uh, the insert is going to go into a, a piece, so it's got to be sized, and then we can we can make the ring and thread it, and we'll do that. And uh, African blackwood and, and uh, dense woods like boxwood, which you just, I, I simply can't find in the U United States. I don't know where, where it comes from. But um, African blackwood uh, works well. Uh, some of the uh, uh, Bradford pear, some of the dense, denser woods with nice straight grain are, are the best pieces to uh, thread. This is a piece of cherry and it's soft, but we're going to we're going to thread that, too. So you don't have to have that nice wood or the exotic woods, uh, but they are easier to thread. Are you, are you putting your threads across the end grain or how do you how do you mount the wood for this? It's it's mounted as a spindle piece. The uh, the uh, end grain is this way. The side grain is this way. Thank you. Uh, it, it moves less or it moves more evenly than if you had side grain, I mean, uh, face grain uh, wood, you can do it both ways. So it's, it's, not, it's not impossible to do it the other way. All right. And cherry is a good wood for this or cherry works for this? It'll work tonight, I hope. <laughs> okay, <thanks. laughs> we'll, we'll know soon enough. No, I've, 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 I've threaded uh, 
funky wood before, and we might use some super glue, we might not. Depends on how the threads are going to be uh, cut out. And uh, we're going to use, I'm going to start with a threading machine because that's where I started. I mean, I watched somebody do it at a uh, conference one time, and I forget who it was, but it was uh, uh, some professional wood turner had some hand chasing tools, and he and he threaded a, a box top. And I thought, hey, that's cool. And I went out and I bought a set of crown threading tools. And I went home and uh, and tried to do it. I ended up giving the tools to another club member and said, here, you do you take these and you do a demo. He never came back. <laughs> so I watched Bonnie Klein at a uh, conference, at a symposium a couple of years ago. And uh, Bonnie Klein is a wood turner and she made this machine, threading machine. And um, it, it fit on a 10 inch lathe. And, um, you know, we, it's nice to have a 10 inch lathe, but I saw another machine, the one we're gonna use tonight, but I, I drilled the, I drilled and tapped the bottom of this and put it on a uh, one inch tool post and I can put it in the tool post like this and use that to thread thread tops. I'm not going to use it. This is not my my lathe. It's the um, the tool post doesn't go down far enough to be at center. So I'm going to use a different machine, but if you have a, a Baxter threader or a Bonnie Klein threader and it's only on your 10 inch lathe, you can make it work on a, another lathe by threading and putting in a tool post that fits. And for you Gene. folks who are very, very creative, you can build your own. Which you yes, do. I've done that. And I'll talk about it and why, uh, why you why you might spend uh, two hundred and fifty dollars or whatever they cost for something like this, rather than building your own. If you're going to do a lot of it, you're going to play around with it, and you want to and you want to learn what it, how it works and everything else. You can you can build your own. If you have a machine shop where you can get something sturdy enough, you can build your own. I built mine out of uh, a, a couple pieces of PVC and some wood and some uh, grub screws and whatnot, and it worked. But it, it doesn't have the rigidity and the precision that you would like to have if you're going to do a lot of this stuff. That, I mean, it's one of those cost benefit things, you know, how much do you how much do you want to play around and how much do you want to get done? Oh, yeah, it's true. But I, I mentioned that because Dave Kingsley is wanting to know, can you build your, who builds tools? So uh, that's the reason I mentioned that, Walt. <laughs> yeah, and the answer is, yeah, you can, you can surely do it. I mean, all it is is a chunk of metal with a screw through it and uh, a couple uh, bushings to, to secure it. So it just depends on what your skill level is on building tools. All right, great. Uh, right, so... No questions so far. What we're going to do is we're going to measure. And I start I'm going to do at the top of that thing. Yeah. I'm going to start with the inside ring, which is the uh, mortise, because when I'm doing a threaded top like this, I want the, the screw threads to be on the outside of the insert. If you're going to put something in there, you don't want to put whatever you're putting in there to get into threads and, and not be able to get the top back on. So if the threads are on the outside, uh, you, this is an urn. If you're putting ashes in there, you, you can screw the top back on and it won't get in the way. And so I said, well, why would you ever want to take the top off an urn? Well, I don't know. I haven't been there and done that. So, uh, But the people that I sell urns to want threaded tops, so they like threaded tops. I've sold them both ways. So um, the other thing you could, you could make inserts out of is something like Corian, which is a plastic or a resin, 
and uh, it turns quite well and it threads quite well. So if you got some black Corian, there's no reason you couldn't use that. I mean, once the top's on, you don't see the insert anymore. So it's a, a, one of those calls. Since we're woodworkers, we'll use wood. So I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to, I, I already prepared uh, a piece, a blank of cherry. I'm going to cut it in half. There's a tenon on both sides, and we're going to do the ring first, the piece that goes into the top. Again, if you have any questions or something's not clear, please speak up and uh, let me know. And um, I'm, I'm sure that this is big enough. I'll cut this in half and then we'll we'll set up the machine. to chase things across the floor. And I noticed that this piece was tapered a bit, and so this is a little bit larger than this piece. Then uh, it's it's a slight taper, but I'm going to put the larger piece in first for the ring. Of the inside of the top where the insert's going to go. And I've cut it flat in the top so that it sits it sits solid on the on the inside of that top. And it's just about the right size. Just a spec barge. So I'm just going to take a scraper and pull it down a little bit. If Brenda's paying attention, Brenda is our decorator. Uh, his floor is clean. I'm sorry. Is that a question? No, no. Brenda's been correcting us on decoration all night. Yes, Eddie. I noticed the floor was real clean. Yeah. Oh, and Brent. <laughs> Brenda's never seen that before. <laughs> it's not my doesn't shop. happen in my garage. <laughs> Okay, that fits in there pretty well. There's a little tab on here I was trying to get off just to make sure that it wasn't hitting on the top. All right, so that's that's the outside of our insert. And this is the mortise, so I'm going to cut the ring out of it. And the um, okay. 
Well, you're going to be about the same size as the top. A little bit smaller. Now I don't need a whole lot of threads because the rings the rings are actually pretty thin or uh, not in the, in the thickness but I do need enough room to get threads in there and and uh, not hit the bottom of the of the uh, the top or the uh, the, the uh, waist How you doing cap this is Troy Forrester my number is two thousand four nine and uh, the other thing is what did what I do with that little ruler? Oh, here it is. I do want this to be perpend uh, parallel with the wave bed, and if I put this on here, and it's it's very common for us to when we're when we're doing something. Can you do the overhead, Tom? Like this, that you think you're getting it square, but it's really not. If I put that ruler in there like that against that edge, you can see that I am not parallel with the lathe bed. And it's easy to taper something and not be able to see that taper. So I want to check that and make sure that when I, when I, uh, before I go to thread that, that it's squared and parallel to the lathe bed. I'm just going to take a scraper. Well, I don't know what's wrong with it. I mean, I've tried, what? you know, I'm doing what things. Thing? You could you could use a skew. You could use a lot of different things to. Hello. I don't know why you're asking, but here I am. It's more square, but not quite square enough. We got it's kind of fuzzy, Tom. The, oh, there we go. It's maybe. <laughs> thought it was maybe my maybe it was my uh, helmet that was making things fuzzy. Did one more time. All right, that's that's much better. Now, if I was hand chasing this, we can. If we have time later, I'll 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 entertain you with some hand chasing. But uh, there's there's a tool. I, I made this tool. You're talking about making tools. It's a piece of uh, it's just cold rolled steel, and I've ground it so that it's uh, it's flat on in there, and it's got this little hook on here. And if I were hand chasing this, I'm going to put a relief in here so that if I'm hand chasing, the tool won't hit the back. And I'll do that just to, as, a, as a step in here, although I don't really need it for the machine. And that just puts some relief on the, on the back edge of that so that the threading tool doesn't hit the back surface.
Okay, now we'll set up the threading tool. And what, well, what I should do first is uh, we, we need to make sure that everything is square. And in order to do that, I'm going to remove this chuck. Can you stay on the on the top camera? And this is just a, a, a piece of a flat piece of wood mounted on a, a face plate. So we need to do get this out of the way. Make it better so you can see better. I've got a square. I'm gonna put the put this so it's square. And then I'm going to lock it down and move this up. Until it's square. And then I'm going to lock this machine, lock it down here on the, uh, on the tool post. And now if, if the if the uh, banjo is square, this is going to be square to the cutter. So I can move the banjo out of the way, take this off. And the cutter that I'm using is uh, mounted in a collet. It's a 60 degree thread cutter. And there are other kinds of This is another another cutter. It's in a it's in a uh, a collet that you would use in a Morse taper uh, spindle, and you would have a draw bar on it to tighten it up. But we're not we're not using this one. This one has a uh, a, a collet that you can tighten down without the draw bar. Either one will work though. Any questions about that so far? So it looks good, good if, you got, if, you, if you got a little confused about the squaring, you'll, you'll get that question answered in just a moment and you'll see how his setup is going to work for her. Yeah, it's, uh, being square is, is everything if you're going to cut straight threads. Yeah, so if you watch them square up both pieces and unsquare one, in a moment you're going to watch them square it back. So. Right, well... Uh, what I've got to do is move it up to the cutter. I'm going to set the, the tool. It's got a couple uh, little handles here. One moves it in and out. One moves it forward. And it's a 16 threads per inch 
screw in here. So as I move it forward, it's going to move forward at the rate of 16 threads per inch. Now in the insert, we only need about four or five threads. But I want to be able to see what it's going to look like. And as long as I don't move this this one, move the tool post, and I square up the uh, square up the um, banjo, everything should stay square. Now that's all assuming your banjo is nice and square, nice and straight. All right. So, actually, if you you if you if you look over the piece and you look at the edges and line them up with your with your eye, you can tell pretty quickly when they're when they're out of square. You can see small differences, but the the tools actually help you to get that. If it doesn't look right, then you got to go back and see where you maybe made a mistake. So now I'm going to I'm going to move this out to the point where I can I can move this into the cutter and start making my threads. I want to just see let it touch all the way around to see that it's square and it's not see I, it's not touching over here. Oh. Maybe it is. Still looks square. Okay, we're going to go with it, and we'll we'll see how it goes. The cutter is going to be moving about three thousand RPM, and that's the advantage probably of the machine over hand uh, chasing with regard to soft wood, because it will cut the soft wood. If you're hand chasing, you're going to be chasing about three hundred and fifty revolutions per minute, and the wood is not moving as fast across the cutter surfaces as it will be here. So the advantage, if there is an advantage to the machine, is that it, it will cut cleaner threads on soft wood. Everything is locked down. We've got to lock this down. Now I can turn this into the cutter. See that it's cutting evenly. Those threads look pretty good. So I can uh, back this out of the way. Move this out. And uh, take it out of the chuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You yep. made that threading cut with one pass? One pass. Yep. All right, it's it's, a six, amazement. it's 16 threads per inch. They're not very deep. But you don't want to go, you don't want to keep pushing in because the more you push in, you're you're cutting the tops off every every time you push it in and you're going to get more and more splinters. If you can get it in one pass, it's going to be better with the machine. Now, this is not the same as chasing threads. You can't do that in one pass. But this is uh, these these threads actually look pretty good. And what I do is take a um, toothbrush, brush out the sawdust.
and put a little paste wax in the, in the thread. So I can do this now or do it later. So I have to make the tenon that's going to screw into here. But I'll let the, the wax kind of go into the wood. Can you see the threads? Yeah, oh. great. Right there's great view. Right, right there. Yeah. Impressive. For softwood, that's pretty good looking threads. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to make the, uh, the mortise and have to go back to um, put the... At home, I have two lathes. I have a threader on one lathe and the other lathe. But actually, I don't have to align this again. If I leave it alone, it should stay square. But I do have to take it out because I can't turn the I can't turn the piece down to where I need to be without the tool rest. So we'll have to square it again, but it'll go quickly. Okay, the, I think the hardest thing to learn about using the machine or even, you know, even with hand threading is how big do you have to make the tenon in order that the threads are going to screw in to the top? How much do you think it has to be bigger or smaller than the inside of the top? Bigger. It has to be the same diameter once threaded. Yeah, so it is bigger, but it's only as it's only as much bigger as the bottom of the thread. And what is that? What do you? What would you guess? How uh, how many millimeters or or uh, three thirty seconds? Three thirty seconds. Get out of dodge! You just made that number up. It's it's actually about. Uh, for 16 threads per inch, 0 0.039 uh, thousandths. So, or, uh, let's see, what would that be? Hundreds of an inch. So, anyhow, it's uh, it's about a millimeter. Just about a millimeter. So, I want this to be about a millimeter larger than the inside diameter of these threads. Members, before you say, how am I going to calculate that? In a few minutes, we're going to show you the test and how you can adjust. So stick around. This is machine threading. And uh, if we get Walt to stick around a little bit, we'll do a little hand threading at the end. Um, but you know, I, I, brought, I brought my hand threader with me. We can try a little bit on some cherry. We'll see how it goes. All right. But just for, we... a, ba just yeah. for a basic explanation. And in our... Um, chat tonight we have some locations for you to buy the the threading rig that walt is showing you it's that information's in our chat before you leave save the chat oh you know what i did i measured the inside but i didn't i didn't take off oops i didn't take off the millimeter the machine's coming apart here now. Something happened. It not came off. Oh, anyway. yeah, it's good. 
All right, so I measured the inside. And I've got to add a millimeter. Actually, I think the millimeter is too much. But Somebody convert 0.036 to uh, millimeters and see what you get. 0.036 inches to millimeters. If you have a calculator out there. Point out three six two point nine one four four millimeters. Point nine one. Point nine one millimeters. Okay, so it's a little less than a millimeter. But that'll be good enough, close enough. Okay, it looks better. <clears throat> so not only is this the mortise, it's also the insert that go drops into the the uh, Top of the piece. So the back of this insert is going to be this dimension right here. And that will come off the back. Again, I only need a few threads on this, but I've got to come down to that level to in order to be able to get those, those threads. And again, if I was, if I'm hand threading this, I have to have some relief on the back so that if the, when the tool gets through the threads, it doesn't hit the back of the uh, piece. And I'll just do that a little bit just to know how much thread room I'd have to work with here. Then I'll set, set the machine up again. As quickly as I can. I want to I do want to face this off so that I have a good flat surface. And I do want to round this front end a little bit. What am I doing here? Thank you. 
Members, you don't want to do what Walt just did. He was a little bit sidetracked. So um, once you face off that piece, don't change your chuck. Yeah, I put it back in the same spot, I hope. <laughs> okay, yeah. We, we, we sort of have them dancing on eggs right now, so stick <laughs> with us. Yeah, this, uh, hindsight's always, you know. <laughs> 2020? Cheaper than foresight, I guess. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> So again, we'll get our banjo squared up. <clears throat> we'll set the other piece out of the way so we can find it later. <clears throat> Again, I just kind of check it visually. And if it doesn't look right, try to figure out why. That looks pretty good. Then get our cutter back on there. And there are a number of videos on the web uh, about this particular threading machine. So if you're interested in it, oops, I didn't mean to do that. If you're interested in it, uh, you can check out those videos too. That did, did, didn't it? Did I do that? Yep. Well, I'm going to line it up visually. If I get this square, That looks pretty good. <laughs> okay, everything's pretty tight and looks pretty square. So we're gonna cut the outside of the uh, mortise, of the tenon, I'm sorry.
The threads don't look bad, and we'll uh, see if it fits. I'm going to leave the machine, leave this right where it is, because if I move anything other than this, oh, I can't back it out, can I? Well, let's put it in the out. <clears throat> Get I'll have to get it lined up again. I didn't leave myself quite enough room back here. How about that? Too loose. Too small. Oh, so no. What do, so what do you do when it's too small? You get another piece of wood. <laughs> because there's no way of putting more wood back on here in order to make, it's, I, when I measured it, I measured it, I, I thought I pulled it out, um, uh, made it a, a, about a millimeter larger, and evidently I, I didn't. I probably should have checked it against the edge first to make sure it was larger than the, the, uh, uh, the mortise. So I, I will just go through the I'll, operation. I'll cut this off. Make it the right size and, and thread it again. If I have your patience for that. Oh, you have our oh, patience. Go ahead. You're good. <laughs> we we never know how to correct something until we do it wrong, and that was just a type, a little brief pause. Remember, folks, you can do this in your own shop, just what Walt did, and you yep. can recover from it, just like Walt's going to do. Uh, the, the the brakes haven't completely failed. Just pump them a couple of times, and we're back to the route. So we're going to keep going uh, while Walt was getting all this ready. I have to remind you that we are in the market. We being worldwide wood turners uh, is in the market for a safety director. So uh, if you're interested in that position. We'd like to get about a two or three minute safety tip each week. Um, and it would have really is going to help our novice turners. We never call them beginners, novice turners um, on, on the way they handle things in their shop and the way they get things done. Um, we've joked about it for a long time about Brenda Thornton being our director of our band aid degree. Um, it, 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 that was a joke, but you have to be ready for and know what you can walk into. So we want a safety director. If you're interested, email me or put it in the chat. We'll get to it. And next Wednesday evening, at this time, we'll be doing tips and tricks. And we're wondering what kind of tricks you've got up your sleeve. Those are some nice sliding cuts. Nice. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna measure this again. I'm gonna add a millimeter to it. I have a question on that real quick. Shouldn't we be adding a millimeter per each side? So two millimeters? No. Okay. Um, you're you're taking off uh, a half a millimeter on each side, basically. I mean, you're you're taking off the two millimeters. I don't know. Better shut up. <laughs> the answer no, I, is no. I was just asking. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Now I'm going to do a trick that um, Alan Batty talks about in, in, in the video. This is on hand chasing, but it works here too. And that is, if you cut down to the uh, inside diameter of the threaded piece and it fits on there, you know that that's, that's too small. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's the right size for the, ins the bottom of the thread, basically. So... I'm going to try that. This is a little trick that that uh, 
not Stuart Batty, this is Alan Batty. He's not around anymore, but there's a video and he, he has a, a video on thread chasing on the web also, uh, which I think is a, a good video, as well as Eddie's video, which is very good. So this is this is the size that the um, caliper tells me it should be. Just a little bit larger than what the caliper tells me it should be, but I'm going to go down that another millimeter just to get that to fit inside that piece. Not quite. I, I, I have to ask Walt, but wait a minute. If you make it. Pardon? If you make it small enough to fit inside of those other threads, how are you going to get threads to come proud of that to be into the groove? I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut the tenon back just shy of that piece that goes inside. Oh no, man, I thought you were, I thought you were I'm, tricking me. Okay. <laughs> It's like putting the lid on a container. If you take a little bit of time, now that that fits over the threads. So I don't want to go. I don't want to go that deep. I want to go shy of that, just enough to turn to turn some threads down to that witness mark. This will be my witness piece. If I get down that far, I've gone far enough. Does that make sense? Perfectly. It should in a minute. I figured you figured a way to put the, the wood back on. That's you know. there we are. Millimeter back on. A little large, but that's okay. We can take wood off. We can't put it back on. We just learned that lesson the last time I did this, right? <laughs> I should say we learned. I, mean, I should say I reinforced it because we've all done it. Yeah, I mean, I to figure you'd be the member of the day if you if you figured out to do that. <laughs> Bob Grinstead says it'd be wonderful for his turning. Yeah. You know. oh, let me let me go one one step further and put that relief cut in there. Ah. Getting ahead of myself here. Now, in, in this type of threading, the relief relief cut is not mandatory. It's just a nice detail and it's easy to work with. Yeah, it's a nice place that you can know where to stop. That's. Not mandatory. Hey, Walt, we had a suggestion on how to put wood back on. Bob, heard how Bob says to put the lathe in reverse. Well, that's why Bob's work is so small. With um, with today's uh, 3D printers, anything's possible, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Top view, please. Pardon? We switch cameras. There we go. You see the groove, folks? Thanks. The one on the left. Uh, That's the relief. If you do hand chasing, it's mandatory. Um, it's, this. it's a nice detail when you're doing it this way. 
If you wonder how this goes, pick up the medicine bottle on your kitchen table and take a look at how threads work and done in, in press outs. Uh, they have the same thing. There's a certain degree of relief back there to keep the caps where to screw down tight and not bind on anything. And that's what this is going to do. Walt, well, who who is your who's your AV director in there tonight? Um, Kenny. Oh boy. He's, this is his shop. It's his lathe and everything and his video setup. And I'm very grateful for him to do this because if you watch it from my my shop, I have CenturyLink uh, internet and I get about something between uh, 1.5 and 2 megabits per second upload, and you wouldn't see or hear anything. Ouch. Yeah. Hey, that's even better than yeah. T-Mobile. <laughs> yeah, Tom, we, uh, I definitely appreciate you opening up the shop to us and letting uh, Walt do the demonstration for us again. He won't, he, he won't even let me, he that. won't even let me clean up. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Well, he's been to my shop. He knows what kind of job I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna square up the banjo and then I'm gonna do a a, a sight squaring on the uh, on the tool. So I say you don't need you don't need but a speck of dust or dirt between the surfaces of a square and something else. Yeah. Not, not be able to get it square. That looks pretty good in my setup here. Let's see. Say, Walt, what kind yes. of threading jig are you, what threading jig are you using? What, what? What threading jig are you using? Chef work kits. Chef work kits, okay. So folks, earlier there was a link for the chef work kit that was put into the chat. Members helping members, that's what we do, stuff. When you have- what th Oh, what threading jig am I using? What's it called, Tom? Chef work kits. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we got to move this guy in. I think I left myself enough room. Maybe not. Oh, I have to move the whole banjo in. Okay, I think that will do it. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. My witness is right there. That's how deep the thread we want. We'll probably do two passes on this.
Okay. Take my toothbrush. Brush this off. The threads look pretty good. Let's see they fit. We'll do it at the top. That's not good. Where did I do it at the top? Come on, Walt. <clears throat> Here, no, that's that's the dead one. Is it inside the lid? Is it where? Is it inside the lid? No. Oh, I think I heard it drop. Here it is. <clears throat> Always put things where you can find them. Step number one. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to swing this out. It's a tiny bit too big. So at this point, there's two things I can do. I can I can turn it around again in the lathe and take some of these off and then re rethread it rather than trying to go deeper, or I'm just going to I'm just going to go deeper, uh, make another pass. And again, I'm going to use my uh, witness mark here to where I started. I'm going to get it back in the same spot. I hope. I'm going to crank it in a little bit more. Now, dust it off. How about that? So now the the trick is we we know that the uh, outside of this will fit into the top. This we we measured it and it should fit into the top. And the bottom is going to go into the base. We haven't gotten the hole through the bottom yet, and. Uh, 
we have to do that. And we have to cut down the bottom so that it fits uh, into the, uh, the top where we want it to be. So we got to take this apart. We're done with threading. There is uh, Alan, Alan Betty had a, uh, another saying. He said, if you want to learn to hand chase threads, get a ton of boxwood, lock yourself in a room, and you'll come out screwy. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put this back on here. And see what we have to do to make this fit onto the. Now we were talking about relief. We are going to need some relief on the top so that the 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 thread when it screws down goes past the bottom of that of that thread. Otherwise, it won't sit flat uh, against the uh, surface we're going to put it on. I'll, I'll, it'll make sense more later. So this has to sit down in here. It's a little bit big, which is good, because if it was too small, it wouldn't sit down in there very well. So we're going to take some of that down. <clears throat> on your bed white where did I put the tool rest is the question right So what do I do with my calipers? Just about right. Okay, it's too long, and I don't need that many threads, and you don't want to be screwing it forever, so uh, we'll, we'll cut some of that off. This should be the right size to go down inside that vessel. That's a little bit big. I'll take a little bit more off, and then we'll drill the hole in it so that, that you can put something into the vessel. That looks good.
Does anybody know what you don't want to do? Use a force in a bit to do that. You could use a force in a bit. Why not? Watch the, watch the heat. Well, it would get hot. That's true. And, and if it were African blackwood, you'd surely crack it. Yep. But the what you don't want to do is you don't want to go further this way than the, the piece that's going down into the <laughs> wood. True, true. That's rule right 740. That, uh, and that yeah, rule yeah, 7, rule 740. 747A, the inside diameter shall never exceed the outside diameter. Is that, right. <laughs> is that what, which one it is? 747A, yeah, well. Tonight it is. I violated that twice this past week. All right, so <laughs> now for for the insert, what I'm going to do basically is cut this off as a ring that will go down inside. But I need to make it. I need to make it shorter. I mean, if I cut it off, let's see. Can I do that? I can say I'm going to shut, cut it off and leave it too long so you can see what happens. But I I think I won't do that. Um, oh, you won't. You got it. <laughs> I'll cut it. <laughs> well, first, the other the other thing is you don't want to go too far out, but you do want to go down far enough so that you get a hole when you cut it off. That <laughs> edge. I'll just do that with the uh, party tool. Okay, we're far enough now. If I cut this off, we should have a ring. I am going to shorten this a bit. rounding the outside edge so that that first uh, thread doesn't catch and break off. And that screws down far enough now. I do have a little bit of flash on there that didn't cut down quite far enough, but it, it'll come out and be fine. Now put this back in. This is the other ring that's going in the top. Actually, you can put this in here and clean this up. And we can cut the outside ring off.
And there we have a threaded insert. This will be glued into the top. This will be glued into the bottom. They're easier to thread together when they're glued in. You also didn't wax the exter the um the the proud yeah. threads. We clean it up a little bit. And there we go. And it's a little bit on the top. It's a, a little bit too big to go in there um, the way it should. Although I measured it and I cut it off, and remember I stuck it on there. Um, it, it it's ex expanded a little bit or um, my measure was a little off, but what I can do is I can put it, I don't have a spigot jaw chuck here right now, but I can put it back on the spigot jaw chuck and just take off a fraction more uh, wood on this side, and uh, it will sit down in there and sit close to the, to the top edge. I don't want it that far from the top. I want it to sit down like this. Now I have a uh, here's one I made previously out of blackwood for this. That's all trimmed up, and the sits on there like that very nice so that's that's the threaded insert and it, it's believe it or not it's easier to do than threading the actual object itself and trying to get it all to fit together because you saw when when I made a mistake I just could t take another piece of wood and, and do that piece over right. but if I had done it on that top and the bottom well, they either have to make a new bottom or a new top or, or uh, just, you know, go in the other room. Put in a new or or over again, yep. Very Outstanding, nice. Walt. Very nice. Thank Very you. Very informative. Do you want to yeah, just that's really a, cool. a basic introduction? Good, good job, Walt. The, thank you. Do you want a basic introduction to, to uh, uh, thread chasing with the, the mechanical? Tool? Yeah, not, Billy, no. Bird, Billy Bird asked for that special. Sure. Hey, hey Walter, I got a suggestion. Pardon? Uh, Walter, I got a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, usually on a cold day or when I don't want to do anything else, uh, I'll make uh, about six or more of the uh, tenons and um, uh, mortises. I, I just throw them out where they'll fit together. That way, when I'm doing a piece, I already have a set ready to go. All I right. got to do. Well, is I, I do seven. that. In fact, I, I've got I've got probably five or six sets of these things already for some vessel, and they're all about the same size. Okay. Because I have, if I'm making an urn, I need enough room to put, you know, the ashes in. Yeah. So, well, never never mind them. No, I. But the same <laughs> thing with finials and Christmas ornaments. If I'm making, right. if I'm making finials. I might as well set up and make 20 of them and right. throw them in the drawer okay. because making them one at a time doesn't, isn't very efficient. I so, just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, thanks. And I, it's, it's, it's a good suggestion. Very good idea. So if, if I'm going to hand thread on this just to make a mortise,
I'm going to round over this edge. And I'm going to put some relief in the back. And we can review. And the chaser that I'm using is a double sided tool. This side's for the uh, outside, this side is for the inside of a mortise. I'll do an outside, then I'll cut a little hole in there and do the inside just to show you the threads, the difference in that. And um, you're you're really turning. This is this may this may not work so good with the cherry. We'll see. But we're turning it at about 300 RPM. This button came off, Tom. This. Oh no, you broke it. You got to. Yeah, I know. Lathe. I feel bad about that. You got to buy him a new lathe now. Can you, you know, turn the wrist out all the way down to the low position and yeah. then point the thing at the one at the. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're going to turn this to, I think, one. So we're going about somewhere between 200 and 500 RPMs per minute. This, I think we've, we've decided this was about 300. And the, uh, the trick, I think, and, and Eddie, correct me if you're wrong, you're, you've done this more than I have. The trick is just get this thing started in the, in the corner so that- 45 degree. You're getting some threads going. And it's kind of a circular motion. And you know, this is where the flatness of your tool rest and the cleanness of your tool rest comes into play. Yep. And I yeah, love that it, robust. It's a scraper, so you, you've got to have it level or down. Typically, it's best to do the recess the female threads first and then do the male threads final because it's easier to take material off of the the tenon, yes. the male threads than the female. Yeah, it's easier to uh, modify the. It's easier to modify the uh, tenon than it is yeah. to modify the the mortise. So that's why that's you true. want to do that first. And again, that's the thing the, the I use. The tendency is to taper it. And I mean, it's just because you're coming, you're coming around from the outside. And, and yep. leveling it off. I mean, when, when you're coming around from the outside, you don't tend to give the back enough uh, credit. So once you get those threads started, you you can start coming in, letting it, and it's very crumbly. If I were, if I were gonna try to do this with uh, cherry, I would saturate it with super glue first. I mean, I'm trying to do it with cherry, but it's not, it's not giving me very good threads. They might work, but but it wouldn't be very good threads. If I do that with African blackwood, I don't know what you can see. Give myself a little uh, relief here. And so, folks, that's the Mike Mahoney threading. threading this is a, uh, by, uh, Carter. Mike, it's a Mike Mahoney tool. Yep. Very intuitive, very easy to use. Again, I'd want to round off the top a little bit.
and then come in. For those asking about the relief cut he just put in, watch what happens when he goes across the face of it. Relief cuts give him a place to get out. And instead of instead otherwise, of, you'll bind it. You instead of thimbles, you get these fine shavings, and that's what you want. Those fine shavings give you a nice clean thread that you that you've cut. So the 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 um, this just is a matter of of practice and timing. Uh, if you're going to cut softwood, I, again, I think the, the jig does a better job than hand threading because you're not going very fast with hand threading. But hand threading is a whole lot of less setup. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you, you got your threader and you've got the pieces measured, you, you don't have to set up your, your jig to, to do something. But it does take, take some practice to be able to yeah, do this. Any, Any other questions? You want me to do the inside one? Please. Sure, go ahead, sure. demonstrate that as well. Well, what, what speed are you turning at, about 300 RPMs? Three, about 300. I don't okay. know exactly yeah. because it haven't, we haven't got a, a RPM meter on here, but we, we measured it before with okay. a, a tachometer, and I think it was around 300, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's about 300, 350 that I, uh, that I thread at with, with that uh, threader. So if I'm going to do the inside on this one, <laughs> I'm going to turn it back up to, to cutting speed. And for your tool presentation, do you, do you uh, present it similarly uh, like, a, like any other scraper? For, for which tool? For the uh, Carter and Son there. Um, I'll show you on center, but, but raised up. Yeah, you're cutting just slightly at, above or at center. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Trying to square it off a little bit. Again, here it's it's a good idea that it, you check it. Yeah, see how square you are with it. And, then, and it's still, I'm tapering. It's tapering uh, out, out this way. So I have to come in a little bit on the bottom, but I'm gonna cut a relief. I'm gonna use that little scraper tool I made to cut the relief because when you do the, uh, when you put this tool in there, if it hits the bottom, It'll stop and then it'll strip out your threads. So you need a, a little place where you, you, it won't hit the bottom. You can get it out before it hits the bottom. That makes sense? Just like on the outside, you have to give the, yep. the threader some relief. Yeah, on the inside though, you, you're cutting it so that when you, when you come in with a tool, you can get it out before you hit the bottom of the, uh, the wood there.
And you, um, they make for, they make these tools that you can buy. I think Crown makes them. Sorby, Sorby makes them. Okay. Yeah, we have an old useless scraper you don't use. You can modify it. Moder watch the heat. You can modify and make your own. Right. You know, so, like those freights. So I want to double check that I've got a, uh, a little rounded area here. If I come in on it square and I hit, I catch, I catch one of those teeth on that square, it's not going to be good. It's not going to, it's not going to want to go in at all. I've learned that the hard way. Even everybody, everybody tells you that. So all you have to do is forget it one time. So if I take this tool now, and I don't want to start at the at the uh, at the very end. I want to start in the middle, and I just want to. with African blackwood is you can't see it. <clears throat> and the tool does the work for you basically. Once you get that thread started, it'll pull itself in. And it's your job to get it out of there before it hits the, hits the end on the, on the bottom. Members, that was a demonstration of how to apply the interior and exterior threads. Uh, he can't screw this together. If he does, he'll make demonstrator of the year. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> right, right. It's just a demonstration on the interior and exterior threads. Just what hand chasing is. But it's the same, the same operations. Basically, you're making your, your, um, uh, your mortise uh, first, as someone else said, you know, that it's easier to adjust the uh, tendon than it is to adjust the mortise. So you make your mortise first and, and then, and then make a tendon that will fit into it and then adjust it so that it fits into the vessel that you're making the insert for. And it's, it's just a matter of, of doing it and practicing a, a bit. And, uh, and no matter how you do it, whether you do it by machine or whether you do it by hand, the operation is pretty much the same. Yep. And, and Eddie, Eddie, believe me, has one of the best videos on thread chasing on the web. And the other one I would recommend is Alan Batty's on the web. If you, if you Google either one of those thread chasing Alan Batty, thread chasing Captain Eddie, you'll, you'll get the best of the videos there are for thread chasing. I agree. Oh. And the reason being is they, they explain and leave in all the tricks to it but there's several others out there that do a lot of threading but they don't they don't include the tricks which are vital to being able to thread correctly right yes and again again there are not a number of videos on using the machines also rather than thread you know rather than a thread yeah. chaser there are a number of videos on the machines some are better than others and you right. you have to you watch a couple of them you begin to think oh okay that's what I need to do. And, and the instructions that come with the, the machine are actually pretty good if you read them. <laughs> if you read them. <laughs> if you read them. What wood turnip does that? Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Like it's a oh, those are the oh, operative is, words. You did a great you did a great demo, buddy. I really appreciate you uh, coming through for me. It's awesome. You did an awesome job. Oh, thank you. Appreciate I got a it. question. Good demo, Walter. Go ahead, Brenda. 
What was the name of that last tool you used? The tool? Yeah, the, the this tool. Is a, this is, this is the, actually, the thread chaser, the difference between this tool and the original tool that I gave away is this one has a slight negative rake on it. And the tool I gave away was straight across, flat across the, the surface of the, um, uh, the cutters or the, the uh, threads. These are, these are kind of a helix threads. And, and that difference with the little bit of negative rake made a whole lot of difference, in my opinion, of, of getting the thing started without catching. I agree. Hey, Tom, can you do an do a, a overhead camera shot? And then, Walt, can you re-explain the, the negative rake end of it on there? It's, it's, it's just the top surface. Uh, this is a scraper. Let me see if I can get it in focus here. It looks pretty good. There you go. Put, put it out a little further. There we go. Can you see that slight little bit of, of, of bevel on yes. the top yes. surface? On the yes. bottom surface looks flat. Okay, looks like that. Does That's that mean that you, could, that you could sharpen those by just like running a honing card across yes. that bevel? Yes, absolutely. That's, okay. yeah. That's how you. you sharpen them. I didn't bring, I don't know if I brought a hone with me. I, I don't think so. But it must be a fine grit when you hone it. Not, yeah, not one this, of, yeah. this is like I a- I used a um, thousand grit diamond stone on mine. This is a um, 45 micron diamond sharpener which is the roughest of the ones that come on the paddle but if you if you just take and you and you go across across that um, bevel you you can put an edge on it you can feel it it's the it's not it's not the same of bird that you would get on a um on a gal or a regular scraper my uh, right my scraper here okay if i want to put a burr on this scraper, I, if I take the burr off, I want to put a burr on by coming across the bottom like this to get a burr that sits right up here on top, right? On this edge. But on these scrapers, what we're actually doing, we're coming down like this and, and, and we're, we're not removing the burr so much as we are sharpening that very edge because originally they're sharpened uh, it, it's sharpened against a wheel that has a radius, so you do get a bit of a um, top edge, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do I say? The, the right. edge grind from, from the, uh, the, the, the radius of the wheel. But you can come across that. After, after doing this a couple times, you can touch it to the wheel a very fine grit wheel, like uh, 180 or, or more, and just touch it against the wheel and reestablish that that uh, fine curve in there. But most of the time, if if I'm if I'm going to sharpen it, I'm just going to do this. And that that will do it. Yep. Especially, I mean, if you're using blackwood, I have to find out if the contest. Placement. If you're using softer Plastic. wood, I, it just doesn't work I well think. with with real soft wood. You can flood this with CA glue and harden it, or if you have a stabilizer system uh, for punky wood or something like that, and put it in a vacuum jar with cactus juice and bake it, you'll, you'll have wood that's hard enough to do that. But why not then just use, uh, uh, well, not Bakelite, what do you call it? The, the countertop material. Corian. Corian, oh, Corian yeah. Yeah, you can get black corian. They look almost exactly like blackwood, right? And it's a lot cheaper. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all. If you haven't got any other questions. Thanks, Walt. It was great. Thank yes, you. Thank, well, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I learned a lot tonight. Thank you. Great thank job, you. Walt. Thank you, Walt. Good job. Great job.